Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Celebration Presbyterian Church Markham's midweek devotional podcast for the season of Lent. My name is James Zhang, and I am the Associate Minister of Celebration Presbyterian Church in Markham, Ontario. Each Wednesday going forward until the Wednesday before Easter, I'll be sharing with you a midweek devotional to encourage and aid you in this season of Lent. I hope that this Lent season amidst all of the unpredictabilities of the, of the world around us, that we would take a brief moment of our day to fix our hearts on His Word and to stop to seek His voice just for a moment today. So will you join me in a word of prayer as we begin? Let us pray. Lord God, by Your Word, fill me with a spirit of love and servanthood and compassion. I confess that there are times that I have led my life to be self-serving, self-centered, and instead of being filled with your love, practicing your grace, I've been careless of my neighbors and those around me. I have let my anger, I have let my sense of personal justice or personal vendetta consume me at times. I confess that I am a sinful man, but I repent and ask that your word may enter my heart today to reveal the areas where I am broken and where you desire to heal and rebuild my heart, my spirit, my life. That your saving grace may continually work in my life and those who are joining us today. Remind us today of the grace of Christ that it may convict us, transform us, and renew our hearts and minds today that we may become more and more like you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 21. It says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. And do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of God today. Thanks be to God. Have you ever felt that someone has wronged you so badly <laughs> that you wanted to just seek revenge? If we must be honest and frank, when we witness justice served, there is a really refreshing note that sings from those moments, aren't there? It's bittersweet. Because it means wrath on that person's life. But a sense that the pain served is being served back to them. 
When somebody who has wronged you, insulted you, or caused you pain, there is a broken part of us that feels excited, ecstatic, happy even, at the knowledge of those who suffer in return for their sins. And this may feel that way from a distance. But our excuse is often that they had it coming, or they deserve it. But in so many ways, this is completely contradictory to the very heart of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 19 says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. This is not to say that we should be taken advantage of or be complete pushovers. Okay? But the question of the heart should be, can I and am I able to show mercy and grace even in the worst circumstances? Am I honestly not filled with anger and hate when I practice justice? Am I filled with love and compassion instead? If not, then I believe the heart and action of hatred versus a sound and sober-minded act of justice ought to be honestly and scrutinizingly be criticized. To avenge oneself is a dangerous road to sin, folks. In fact, our anger can often be so overbearing. We lack self-control when we seek vengeance. That it would be very difficult for us to not show it. Or to keep back words that may hurt or to act with spitefulness. Thus, Apostle Paul puts the brakes on before it could even begin. Never avenge yourselves, he says. Instead, we must trust, must trust the Lord that he also he is also a God of justice. Just because he is a God of love does not mean he is not a God of justice. In his timing, in his perfect timing, in his good and great purpose, and in his wondrous ways, he will bring redemption. We must trust that, folks. The truth is this. God does not take pleasure in punishment. And we must acknowledge that, must remember that. Have you ever tried to punish somebody? Does that feel good to you? When your anger and your pain and your resentment overflow out of that punishment, it doesn't feel good, does it? Often it makes us feel even more bitter makes us feel more resentful, not even towards the other person, but even to ourselves. It does not satisfy our souls, folks. And that is the lie of the enemy. The enemy tells us, seek vengeance and you will feel much better. But rather, it is the opposite way. When we seek vengeance, does it truly satisfy our soul? Because the truth is, it is never enough. Sins that have been done wrong to us are often repaid twice of what the hurt was originally. Do I take any pleasure in death of the wicked, says in Ezekiel 18.23? Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live. The Lord takes pleasure in restoration, folks. He is a God of justice, but restorative justice for the sinner. He takes no pleasure in justice, which leads to death and pain. Thus, our heart should always be directed in the same direction as the Lord, to have a heart that yearns and aches for those who have wronged us with covering their shame and loving them unconditionally and even undeservingly. This, this folks, is the justice 
of God. Not to hate our enemies, but instead to love them. As a father turned his face from Jesus, he did not turn away from him because he could not stand seeing what people were doing to him. Instead, it was because he could not bear the sight of his son become sin and die bearing the weight of them. As Jesus hung from his hands and feet on the cross, while the soldiers gambled for his clothes and mocked him, while those who used to follow him traded him for the criminal Barabbas, and while the priests, teachers of the law, Pharisees, and Sadducees, even while Jesus had done nothing wrong, he had no sin, they jeered at his torture. Could Jesus, if he was truly the Son of God, not come down and bring down wrath upon all those who persecuted him and done him wrong? I mean, he was the Son of God, wasn't he? But no. Instead, he bared our sins, became our sins even, and died for our sins on that cross. But he did this knowing the plan of the Father, that even death could not hold him down. He knew that he would rise again from the dead. Even when there seems to be a moment we want to avenge those who sin against us, we must trust that the Lord always has a greater plan for you and I. We trust Him, and we do not avenge out of our own sense of justice, but we trust that God has greater redemptive plans for each and one of us. We trust that even if we die of persecution, of the sins committed against us, there awaits us a greater reward. And that is eternal life. So today, if you have enemies who, who you hate or hate you, or those you wish wrath to be served as justice on them, reevaluate then the godliness of your heart. I know I will today. If you hate them with wishful wrath, you are also in sin. They may seem harsh, but truly it is. Love them unconditionally, and if you pray for justice, then pray that they will see the holiness of God, and that instead you would see them know the Lord, and instead re restored to life, a life of repentance, of love, of truth, and of grace. God's heart in the midst of injustice is never one filled with wrath, but filled with love and restoration. And so, if this word speaks to you today, maybe there is an enemy, maybe there is a person in your life you are still holding grudges with. Maybe there is a circumstance between you and a neighbor that has divided you. Will you, instead of seeking justice or seeking vengeance, bring your prayers to the Lord. Pray for them. Repay them not with evil. Repay them not with anger and spitefulness. But instead, repay with love and with grace, as Christ has done for you and I. May he fill you with his spirit with his strength to do so today. Have a wonderful rest of the week, everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye.